Here is another video inspired by one of our viewers who was having a difficult time figuring out how to interpret the building code for a winder stairway dealing with the walk line that is usually going to be associated with a concentric circle. And I will put the reference numbers to those building codes in the video description box for those of you wondering just what in the heck I'm doing here. And basically a walk line comes in 12 inches from the inside of the stairway, whether it's curved or straight. So here we have a walk line, and the walk line for this particular stairway produces steps at these points, the point along the walk line that are all the same size to check this stairway. And that's not going to be the case all the time when we start mixing squares and rectangles with circles, trying to create a stairway like this one, or even something like this or even something like this where we move the shape of the stairway a little further away from the center of the circle in hopes of creating a walk line path that will produce equal measurements for each step. And that wouldn't be what is happening here where you can see that if we were to draw a walk line 12 inches away from the inside of the stairway that we will produce different size steps along the path. However, keep in mind that some of these steps will be the same depending upon how the center point is used for the stairway. And this is almost identical to the example the individual who was trying to figure out how they could get something like this to work. And in most cases when you have a shape like this it will be difficult to create a walk line using a concentric circle from the center point when the building codes are asking for a walk line that runs parallel to the inside of the stairway and producing different measurements. And again, here's another example of coming off of a center point where we're going to have the same measurements here for some of the treads. However, this right here probably isn't going to be approved by your local building department, especially if they're looking for units of measurement along this path for the stair steps to be the same. And the only way I can think of to change that would be to change this to a curve or a circle where we can have a walk line that will produce equal sized steps along the path instead of dealing with something like this. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at how winders are affected by concentric circles and how they might be interpreted by your local building department. So here we have a three-step winder. One, two, three, inside of a square. However, it could be a rectangle. And instead of three steps, you could always have two steps. Again, using a walk line with the same measurement for each step. However, this won't work if you start thinking outside the box and think that you can split these units of measurement up and draw your lines from the center. And I actually stumbled across this pattern by drawing these lines here. So I thought I would share it with you and provide you with something that is going to produce measurements that are going to be different sizes along the walk line. And since we have a 90 degree corner here, the one in the center is going to be 45 degrees and the other two measurements, this one and this one, will be half of 45 or 22 and a half degrees. For those of you trying to figure out a different way to design a four-step winder that would have the same measurements along the walk line. And as a special treat for those of you who have made it this far into the video and might be a little more interested in stair design, building, and the interpretation of building codes, then this might be something you can use as an argument if you're looking for some type of creative interpretation that will allow you to build this type of stairway. Even though the measurements aren't going to be consistent along this type of walk line. However, they will if we use our concentric circles. Coming 12 inches off for our walk line and then curving around the winder and then coming back to a straight line instead of continuing the straight line through all the way up. 
So with this interpretation of the building code, we will produce equal sized steps along the curved concentric circle walk line. And this doesn't mean you need to round off this section of the stairway. However, it might be if you get a little carried away with your interpretation of this building code and somebody decides that this is a curved stairway instead of a winder. And hopefully if I did my job right, you now have another way to build or design winder and curve type stairways that might meet your local building codes.